This is the Kenyan teacher once again. It is our pleasure to present quantitative treatment of electrolysis. That is the Faraday's law. We shall take some time to begin with some history about this great scientist. So Michael Faraday was an English philosopher who contributed a lot to the study of electromagnetism and electrochemistry. He received very little formal education, but he emerged to be one of the most influential scientists in history. Michael Faraday discovered the principles of electromagnetic induction, magnetism, and laws of electrolysis. Now, electricity, as we know, became practical because of his work. Now, when it comes to chemistry, Faraday discovered benzene. He also invented an early form of the Bunsen burner before the burner was improved much later. He also discovered the system of oxidation states and we owe terminologies such as the anode, the cathode, the electrode, and the ion to Michael Faraday. This great chemist was born in 1791 and died in 1867. Now you know. Let us now cross over to statement and we shall go ahead to derive the mathematical relation to this great law. Faraday's law of electrolysis simply states that the mass of substance deposited if solid or liberated if gas at the electrodes during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity that is passed through the electrolyte. So if we assume M to be the mass being talked about and we assume Q to be the quantity of electricity, then quantity of electricity, then from this statement we get the relation that M is directly proportional to quantity of electricity. Now, in mathematics, if we remove the symbol of proportionality, we introduce a constant k. So m is equal to kq. But from chemistry, we know that quantity of electricity is given by current in amperes, that is I, multiplied by time, T, in seconds. So if we replace Q with IT in this relation, then we end up having this, M is equal to K I T as the mathematical relation for the Faraday's law. We now cross over to look at several examples to illustrate how the various aspects of the law can be tested in any examination. Our question one is going to test calculation of mass deposited. So we are asked that molten aluminium oxide was electrolyzed by passing a current of 30 amperes for three and a half hours. 
we are asked to calculate mass of aluminium that was obtained. To answer this question, the most important thing that a candidate needs to start with is to write the equation for the deposition of aluminium. From here, we shall be able to know how many moles of electrons are involved. Then, once we have written our equation, we need to interpret this equation. And the interpretation is that for us to deposit one mole of aluminium, which is equivalent to 27 grams given here, then we need three moles of electrons which are equivalent to three Faradays. And three Faradays are equivalent to three multiplied by 96,500 coulombs. That is the interpretation of our equation. From here, to answer our question, we need to go back and get the quantity of electricity involved in our question. So we are told that a current of 30 amperes was passed through our electrolyte for 3.5 hours, which we must convert to seconds by multiplying by 60 and another 60. This is giving us 378,000 Coulombs. From this, we now need to argue out that if I need 3, and that I get from here, I need 3 multiplied by 96,500 coulombs to deposit 27 grams of aluminium. This is obtained from the interpretation of our equation. In the question, I only have 378,000 coulombs. So how much aluminum will I deposit with that? Cross multiplication gives 378,000 multiplied by 27. Then we divide by 3 multiplied by 96,500. This would give mass of aluminum as 35.2. Five, four grams and we have answered our question one I want to repeat that the most important is the equation for the position of aluminium and thereafter its interpretation let's now move to question two which is asking about charge on ion of substance being deposited. So, question two is telling us that 3.575 grams over metal was deposited when its molten oxide was electrolyzed by passing a current of 20 amperes for five hours. We are asked that if the relative atomic mass of the metal is 27, then let us determine the charge on its ion. So here, I want us to take an example of a metal like copper being deposited so for us to deposit copper, that would be the equation for deposition. One mole needs two moles of electrons to deposit. So I want us to take note of something here. That charge on ion, for example in our case, charge on copper is two plus or two positive is always equivalent to number of moles of electrons required to deposit one mole of the metal. 
and this is also equivalent to number of Faraday. So here we require two moles of electrons or rather two Faradays to deposit one mole of our metal. With that in mind, we realize that when we are asked to charge on ion, it is like we are being asked to calculate number of Faradays needed to deposit one mole of the substance. So moving forward, we need to approach this question as follows. We shall start with quantity of electricity. And we have 20 amperes being passed over our electrolyte for 5 hours. This we shall change into seconds by multiplying by 60 and another 60. This is supposed to give us 360,000 coulombs. So we realize that to deposit 33.575 grams of that metal, we need 360,000 coulombs. Next thing that we need to do is to find quantity of electricity that would deposit one mole. One mole for our metal is 27 grams. So our argument will be as follows. If 33.575 grams requires 360,000 coulombs to deposit, how many coulombs will we need to deposit one mole, which is the relative atomic mass of our metal? Cross multiplication gives 27 times 360,000 divided by 33.575. We get 289,501.1169 coulombs. What we need to do here now is to change this number of coulombs into number of Faradays and that would coincide with the charge on our substance. So in terms of Faradays, I'll simply divide this number of coulombs by 96,500. Those are the number of coulombs in one Faraday and I get an answer of three. So, we are getting three Faradays needed to deposit one mole of our metal. For that matter, the charge on iron of our metal becomes three plus. We are to question three, and question three is testing us on calculation of time. When a current of 20 amperes was passed through molten aluminum oxide, 33.575 grams were deposited at cathode. Determine the time in hours required for this process. To answer our question, we begin with first things first, and that is to write the equation for the deposition of one mole of aluminium. From here, as we have said, we need to interpret our equation. And what it means is that to deposit one mole of aluminium, which is 27 grams, we need three moles of electrons, which are equivalent to three Faradays, and which is equivalent to three multiplied by 96,500 coulombs. From here, we now need to get the quantity of electricity that is needed to deposit only 33.575 grams. So our argument would be that if 27 grams requires 3 by 96,500 coulombs, how much do we need to deposit 33.575 grams? This would be 33.575 multiplied by 3 
by 96, 500 divided by 27. And we get 359,998.61 coulombs. From here, this amount is given by IT. So our IT is 359,998.61. Now, current is here, 20 amperes. We are now asked time. So time will be the quantity of electricity divided by current, which is 20. We get 17,999.93 seconds which we change into hours by dividing by 3,600. That gives 4.999 hours as our answer. We then ask about calculation of current in question 4. So in question 4, we are told that it took five hours to deposit 33.575 grams of aluminium during electrolysis of its molten oxide. We are now being asked to calculate time in amperes required for the process. So this is almost similar to number three, but we begin with writing the equation for the deposition. So aluminium, three moles of electrons to give aluminium. From here, its interpretation, one mole of aluminium, three moles of electrons, three Faradays, three by 96,500, and of course we shall deposit 27 grams. From here, we need to argue out that for us to deposit 27 grams, we need 3 by 96,500 coulombs. In the question, we deposited 33.575 grams. How much electricity would that require? 33.575 times 3 by 96,500 divided by 27. That gives a similar figure of 359,998.61. From here, we need to argue out that this quantity of electricity is given by IT, 359,998.61. So this time round, we have time. What is left is current. So current will be given by the quantity of electricity divided by time, which was five hours. But remember, we have to change this into seconds by multiplying by 60 and another 60. That gives us a current of 19.999 amperes. Let's now continue to question number five where we shall tackle a question asking us to calculate volume of gas at STP. A current of 6 amperes was passed through dilute solution of sodium chloride for 3 and a quarter hours. We are asked to calculate the volume of gas at anode. And this time, the molar gas volume at STP. So we assume this experiment was done at STP and molar gas volume is 22.4 liters. So here, before we do the calculation, a candidate was to identify the ion that would be discharged at anode if we electrolyze dilute sodium high, uh, sodium chloride solution. And from the discussions we've had in other videos, it is going to be hydroxyl 
ion. From here, we go ahead and write our equation for discharge of hydroxyl ions. And when you discharge hydroxyl ions, we normally get water and oxygen. The equation is balanced with a 2 on water, a 4 on hydroxyl to mean that it will be accompanied by 4 moles of electrons. From here, we need to interpret the equation. And what it means is that for us to produce one mole of oxygen gas, which would occupy 22.4 liters, we need four moles of electrons, which is equivalent to four Faradays. And this is equivalent to four by 96, 500 coulombs. That becomes our interpretation. From here, our work is easy. We need to calculate quantity of electricity from our question. That is 6 amperes by 3 and a quarter. 3 and a quarter is 3.25. Then we change into seconds. That is giving us 70,200 coulombs. Our final argument is that if we need 4 by 96,500 coulombs to produce 22.4 liters of oxygen. This relation we get from our interpretation. How much oxygen shall we liberate when we only used 70,200 coulombs? Cross multiplication, 70,200 by 22.4 liters divided by 4 times 96,500. That gives us 4.073 liters of oxygen. We end our video by looking at what to do when we are asked to calculate volume of gas at RTP. That is question number six. So we are asked the same amount of current, 6 amperes, was passed this time through a concentrated solution of sodium chloride. Ours remain the same, but this time we are asked to calculate volume of gas at anode and molar gas volume at RTP is now 24 liters. Before we begin, let's identify the ion that will be discharged. Remember this time round we are using the concentrated form of sodium chloride. So you agree with me? Instead of hydroxyl we shall discharge chloride due to its higher concentration. Once we've identified the ion we go ahead and write the equation for discharge. So chloride ion gives us chlorine gas and of course, two moles of electrons will be involved. Next is to interpret the equation. So one mole of chlorine, which would occupy 24 liters, needs two moles of electrons, equivalent to two Faraday, equivalent to two by 96, 500 coulombs. From here, let's see how much quantity of electricity we have. That is 6 amperes by 3.25 hours, which must be changed into seconds. And that gives the same amount, 70,200 coulombs. Final argument is, if for me to deposit 24 liters of chlorine, I need 2 by 96,500 coulombs. What now will happen if I only used 70,200 coulombs? Gross multiplication would give 70,200 times 24 divided by 2 by 96,500. And we are getting 8.729 liters of chlorine. That would be the end of our short video where we have exclusively 
discussed the Faraday's law. What a great scientist. We've gone ahead to give the various aspects of the same that can be tested, ranging from time to current to mass deposited to volume of gas liberated. Thank you for keeping it the Kenyan teacher.